In our previous presentations, we learned how to find the time complexity of single loops where in the update expression, the variable is incremented or decremented by a constant. Now in this lecture, we will understand how to find the time complexity of single loops where in the update expression, we multiply the variable by a constant. So let's get started and let's see what are the topics of this lecture. The first topic of this lecture is single loop multiplying the update expression. With the help of an example, we will understand how to determine the time complexity of a single loop where in the update expression, we multiply the variable by a constant. Then after this, I will give the homework of this lecture. So these are the topics of this lecture. Let's get started with the first topic, single loop multiplying the update expression. This is the example loop and our job is to determine the time complexity of this loop. In this loop, we can observe that the first statement is i equal to 1, which is the initialization statement. This means i is initialized to 1. Then we have the conditional statement. We have i less than or equal to n here. This means i is compared with n. And then we have i equal to i multiplied by 5. This is the update expression. And in the update expression, we can observe the variable i is multiplied by some constant. The constant here is 5. And within this for loop, we have the print function. Now our job is to determine the time complexity of this loop. We know how to find the time complexity of a loop from our previous lectures. The time complexity of a loop is same as the frequency count of the innermost instruction of the loop. In this loop, the innermost instruction is printf Neso Academy. Our job is to determine the frequency count of this statement so as to obtain the time complexity of this loop. What is frequency count? Frequency count is same as finding how many times an instruction is executed. So we need to determine how many times this instruction is executed. So let's proceed and let's find out how many times this instruction will be executed. For this purpose, we need to analyze each iteration of this loop. And in each iteration, we need to carefully observe the value of i. We need to find out the pattern. And the pattern will help us finding the time complexity of this loop. Let's do this now. The initial value of i is 1. So in the first iteration, value of i is 1. Then 1 is compared with n. Let's say the condition is satisfied. Then this statement will be evaluated. And then after this, i is updated by i times 5. This means we now need to take the previous value of i, which is 1, and multiply it by 5. We will get 5 as the result. This means in the second iteration, the value of i is 5. Again, 5 is compared with n. Let's say this time also the condition is satisfied, the printf function is evaluated, and i is updated by i times 5. We know the previous value of i is 5, so 5 is multiplied by 5, we will get 5 square. So 5 square is the third value of i, this means in the third iteration we are getting 5 square as the value of i. What happens in the fourth iteration? In the fourth iteration again, variable i is multiplied by 5. We will get 5 to the power 3 in the fourth iteration as the value of i. So these are the values of i in four iterations. We can observe the pattern here. Initially, we have 5 power 0, then we have 5 power 1, then 5 power 2, then we have 5 power 3. This will continue up to, let's say, 5 power k. And I'm assuming that 5 power k is equal to n. This means this value of i is the last value of i for which this condition is satisfied. After this, the value of i will be greater than n. And hence, the loop will terminate 
for this value of i. So this is the last value of i for which this condition is true. 5 power k is equal to n. This is what I am assuming. Now what do you think how many times this loop will run? If we observe this pattern carefully, we can see that in the first iteration, we have 5 power 0. This means in the power, we have 0 in the first iteration. In the second iteration, we have 5 power 1. So, in the second iteration, we have 1 in the power. In the third iteration, we have 2 in the power of 5. In the fourth iteration, we have 3 in the power of 5. So, what is the iteration number for 5 power k? Clearly, it is k plus 1. As for power 3, the iteration number is 4. As for power 2, the iteration number is 3. It is clear that for power k, the iteration number must be k plus 1. So, this means this loop will run k plus 1 times, not k times, k plus 1 times. And this means the frequency count of this instruction is k plus 1. Because this instruction will also run k plus 1 times. Now, let's find the value of k in terms of n. Because the time complexity should be represented in terms of the input size, which is n in this case, not k. We know this loop will run k plus 1 times, but now we need to determine the value of k in terms of n. And that will give us the time complexity. We know 5 power k is equal to n. Now we need to find the value of k. How do we find the value of k? We can apply log on both sides. And let's assume the base of log is 5. Then we will get log 5 power k base 5. Now we can apply one property of logarithm which we learned while discussing the commonly used logarithms and summations. We learned in that lecture that log a power b base c is equal to b times log a base c. Similarly, log 5 power k base 5 is equal to k times log 5 base 5. I am taking the base of logarithm as 5 because we will get log 5 base 5 which is eventually equal to 1. This is also one property of logarithm. Log a base a is 1. Similarly, log 5 base 5 is 1. If we take any other base other than 5, we will not get 1 as the result. To simplify the calculation, we are taking base of logarithm as 5. So, let's take log base 5 on both sides. We will get log 5 power k base 5 in the LHS of the equation and log n base 5 in the RHS of the equation. Simple. Now we know what is the value of log 5 power k base 5. We will get k times log 5 base 5. And log 5 base 5 is 1. So we will get k times 1, which is equal to k. So in the LHS, we are getting k. And in the RHS, we are getting log n base 5. So this means, k is equal to log n base 5. We are getting a logarithmic value. So, k is log n base 5 and we know this statement will run k plus 1 times. So, if we replace k by log n base 5, we know this statement will run log n base 5 plus 1 times. And this means the frequency count of this instruction is log n base 5 plus 1. And the time complexity is therefore theta of log n. Eliminate all the constants and even the base of logarithm. There is no need to mention the base of logarithm in the asymptotic notation. Just mention log n. Log n base 5 plus 1 is equal to theta of log n. This is the time complexity of this loop. It is also worth mentioning that I have used the theta notation instead of the big O notation because the best case performance of the loop is same as its worst case performance which is log n. 
This means the loop will run minimum of log n times as there are no early exits or conditions that would cause the loop to run fewer iterations. And the maximum number of iterations is also log n. Therefore, we can use theta notation for this loop. However, you will often see people use big O notation because they are primarily concerned with the worst case time complexity. So, both notations are absolutely correct. I hope now it is clear how to find the time complexity of these type of loops. Here we can observe that the constant is 5 in the update expression and hence we are getting the base of the logarithm as 5. Now we know what happens if we have let's say 11 here. The base of the logarithm will be 11. If we have been asked to find the time complexity, then we do not have to worry about the base and the constants. But if in the examination we have been asked how many times the innermost instruction is executed, then in that case it is important to know what's the base of the logarithm and what are the remaining constants. So knowing these two is important. This is the reason why finding the time complexity in this way is important. We will get the number of times the innermost instruction will execute and eventually we will also get the time complexity. So this is the way we calculate the time complexity of the single loop where in the update expression the variable is multiplied by a constant. Now let's see the homework of this lecture. Determine the time complexity of the following loops. These are the two loops and your job is to determine the time complexity of these loops. After solving these problems, please post your answers in the comment section. So, we are done with all the topics of this lecture and we are done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.